Paris, um, Paris is going to be the capital of diversity. It's going to regain or reclaim its status in the art world. Uh, and I think uh, the, the infrastructure and the museums of Paris will bring a lot of um, artists, but also collectors. But uh, it's not as much diverse as uh, London or New York, don't you think? The, 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 the diversity is there. There is the, the possibility of diversity in Paris because Paris has a very strong connection to a lot of culture. And it is a place where many people come to. It's one of the top destinations around the world. So I think because it will have a lot more attractability than London now, uh, that it will just bring a lot of investment from the artists, from creatives, from the fashion world as well, that I feel like Paris will reclaim the status that it once used to be. And you are French. Chicago. Chicago is the, the it's, Chicago is black. <laughs> Chicago is the a city, uh, it is always in the shadow of, of, of New York. It's the number two, but it is a capital. It is, it is a city of black excellence. Uh, Chicago has great infrastructure, great architect. And it is, um, it's, uh, Chicago is the, it's the good guy, you know? Uh, when we look at the different cities like Los Angeles or New York, Chicago has always, hasn't moved, has always stayed steady uh, in relation to their community, art community. Uh, and Chicago is home to renowned African-American artists, like? such as Thea Gates, uh, Thea Gates, Rashid Johnson, Kerry James Marshall. And then we have all of the other artists, the, such as Nathaniel Mary Queen. Uh, and I recently have, and they have an amazing school, the school, the Art Institute, you know, which is also a very strong school that attracts a lot of uh, um, um, artists. And no, African American artists, African artists. I think the African American artists have been an exam, sort of an, an inspiration for the African artists. Um, I think their African American artists have been dealing a lot about their status and relationship to America, and and that that painting is a little more militant and involved and reclaiming something that has been taken away from them, which is not only the dignity, but black is beautiful. And I think the African-American painters have for long trying to rebalance the, the, that gap, the fact that they were not present in museums, the fact that their work was not considered as relevant. And because we, we have to also remember that the African-American is American above all. And that makes him different from the African artist who has a different story, who has a different relationship, not only to the continent, but to Europe. So I would say the, the African-American artists have in a way been leading the emancipation of African painters as we see today in, um, as contemporary. So something, that the African art painters don't have to deal with is the question of identity, the question of blackness, because it is evident, you know, it's, it's natural, it's a given, but African American have constantly needs to negotiate uh, their, their place, their status, uh, and negotiate space also among the art, um, not only the art market, but art museums. Yes. <laughs> Amar Kobuafo is an incredible artist because he, in a way, has, has changed the way we perceive the Black figuration. And he did it in a way that also take into account art history because he studied in Vienna, he studied between Accra and Vienna. And when he came, when he was in Vienna, he was immediately taken by the work of Egon Schiele. And the character really, in, in, 
impressed him and I think he founded his signature, his artistic signature on the work of um, Egan Schiele. So there's something that, you know, sort of a gather a lot of collectors, which I am still fascinated by. The, there are collectors from Asia, Europe, Africa, they are absolutely in love with the work of Amwako. So I want to think that his work is not only about Africanity or African, there is something of, of a deconstruction in, 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 in and rebellion in the way that he's doing the, the portraiture. And I think people kind of are, are interested in the new wave, in the new chapters when it, when it comes to uh, figuration. So, so could you speak about this technique about representing the faces? So he uses his hands, which is kind of ironic when you've been to Vienna and everyone was trying to get him into the instruments and repeat and be classical. And he's like, I'm getting this out of my hand and I'm gonna use my, my hand. So the, the, the first act was when he's using, you know, the mixing palette, you know, when artists kind of create and mix with their hands. And when he started to see this marbleized form of black and blue or green, he decided to export that into the painting and he uses very special canvas that allows him the fluidity. And, I, and, and that's where he was, you know, it was a discovery for him, you know, to start. He's like, I'm gonna try this with my, 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 my brush, but I'm gonna try with my, my finger. And I think he's, that's also the revolution. He's the only one to use his hands in that way of creating the, 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 um, the painting. And it's not far from a sculpture, you know. I always look at Amwaku like a sculpture that he's creating the 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 black skin with his own hand. But before um, him, there were there were major artists like Kerry James Marshall, for example. Well, Kerry James Marshall has definitely been a source and uh, and an inspiration for Amwaku in the way they structure the skin. And not only him, there is Toyin Odotula. I would put all of these artists in the same category of the black, you know, post-black form of creating uh, figurations that is not replicating the classical or Western way of creating, you know, that kind of a surface. So yes, um, uh, as I mentioned before, the African American art painters are the torch of the next generation of African painters and they and they mention Amwako you know refer to Kerry James Marshall but also Kehinde Wiley he refers to uh to you know the Tula um there is these artists have been influencing each other so you know what Picasso say you imitate until you find your own you know um your own uh style we, we have to speak about this phenomenon of speculation. So yes, absolutely. So he's a, he's a victim among other artists that has been also into that, you know, space. I think what, um, I think it was going to happen. So there was like this huge bubble around him before even the auction. Everybody wanted to have his work because he was like the, the, the new, you know, there was, he was, he was a new artist and collectors wants to have what is, what is new, what is up and coming. And he has received a lot of endorsement from very high-end collectors. And the fact that he has created, has had a first uh, residence with the Rubel, had an exhibition at the Rubel and topped with a solo presentation, Miami Art Basel. It was like, this is the artist that everybody needs to have. And so it took just one, I think, one auction to realize how, how high the demand was. Uh, because when you, when you put that amount of money, that means that you had, you, you don't do that by yourself. When you bid, you're, not, you're a group of people bidding. And so that sort of, a, you know, informed, us and the market that this is the artist to get and the artist to. So to how do you react to that? What can you do? Uh, well, the most important thing that we have been doing with Amwako prior to that auction was to place the work within the institutions. So at the time where the auction has happened, his work was already, you know, uh, 
promised to the Guggenheim, was already promised at the LACMA. Uh, we had a couple of other foundations that were, you know, um, on, on, on it. We had a, a solo exhibition uh, at the MOAT in San Francisco, which would be opening in um, October. So we had a kind of a solid um, ground uh, at the time of those speculation. When me, I used to be a little bit enraged by that at the beginning. And I think it's common currency now. That okay. Um, and uh, my last question is linked to your new project in Paris. It's uh, J'ai deux amours. Paris. <laughs> this song, this is the song that to me, um, how could I not live with that song? This is a song of my life. This is a song of my, that what I have in a personal level. And, and when I suggested that, that title to my partner, he was like, yeah, I, I can totally see how it fits. But it also- And it's the title of the, of, the, of the exhibition, inaugural yes. exhibition. Des Amours, yes. I think we all have two loves at least, you know, it's like we have a lot of things. We have, you know, beyond the family, we have a mother and a father. We have, to me, there is something that is very magical about having two loves. Uh, which is not exclusive of, you know, not liking one or the other. They, I, I like to think that um, I, I was born in, New, in Noumea, in New Caledonia, to Somali parents. I lived in Somalia. I studied in France. I studied in Canada. I married a French guy. I mean, like, my, it's, my two loves have always been around. And so for the artists and the attraction that I had for the artists, where artists they are all my contemporaries. We kind of are the same age. I'm trying to cheat to be a little close to the millennials, but we are kind of the same generation. And what I noticed with an artist like Amwanko, he's parted between Vienna and Accra. Ayana Jackson is also someone who's in two places. Peter Uka is based in Cologne and he's Nigerian. And I realized and like, how did you select how did you select the the artist for the inaugural exhibition? I didn't select, I put them all. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all of them. All of them. I um, requested uh, that they create two works, ah. you know, for the Dieu des Amours. And of course, we will not be able to display the two works. We probably would display two, one of them. Uh, but it was the way to create this energy. And I also, we will create a catalog, which we will hopefully get on the opening. And I asked every artist, what are they two loves? And, and this exhibition was also in homage to this woman, to me, that represented, you know, the black emancipation, which is Josephine Baker, um, her connection American. to- African, yes, African-American, uh, her connection, her elegance, but also a woman who was not very much accepted by the African-American um, community. 